Good morning to each one of you, my brethren and my friends, and welcome to our devotional God's Word for today. And let me read to you Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 8, as our text for today. And this is a story about Cornelius the centurion. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. At Caesarea, there was an, a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly, clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Cornelius is a centurion, a Roman centurion, who saw a vision here. As an historian, he is called as one of what was known of Italian cohort. Probably this means that as a centurion who he is responsible for 100 soldiers, one centurion means 100. And most probably, most of the soldiers under him were, were of native Romans in, in Rome. And he was staying in Caesarea, and this is Caesarea Maritima, as differentiated to Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Maritima was a seaport in Samaria on the coast of Mediterranean. It is traditionally the capital of the Roman leaders, although Pilate chose to live in Jerusalem. It was built by Herod the Great and named after Caesar Augustus the Emperor. So Cornelius was, a, was an influential person. But even then, even when he was a Roman centurion, Cornelius rejected emperor worship and the Roman pantheon of gods. Let's remember that the Roman Empire was littered with Roman uh, pagan gods to worship, and even the emperor is worshipped. But Cornelius, being a centurion, rejected that that such a man chose instead to worship the Jewish God. It was not a small thing. Cornelius is not the first centurion anyway to earn the respect of the Jews for his giving nature. Let's remember that in the Gospels, in Capernaum, a Jewish elders came to Jesus on behalf of a centurion, asking that Jesus would heal the centurion's servant. They said to Jesus, he is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. So this centurion that is mentioned in the gospel was full of good deeds. The centurion showed his faith in Jesus by assuming Jesus could heal at a distance. And this story we can see in Luke chapter 7, verse 4 to 10. And we don't have time to read that. You can read it by yourself. But here, similarly, Cornelius the centurion was a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. There are particular traits that we can see here in the centurion, Cornelius. He feared God with all his household or family. So, meaning his family, including Cornelius, Cornelius were, was devout. And he was generous. And aside from being a God-fearer and generous, 
he was praying to God continually, which roughly means at every opportunity during the day. He was like the persistent widow mentioned by Jesus in his parable in Luke 18, verse 1 to 8. Remember that parable also, that there was this widow who asked for justice and he went to this judge and he was so persistent that the judge said, and by your persistence, he, he granted a request of justice. He constantly or she constantly pleaded his, her case before God. Just like here, sin, the centurion Cornelius was in constant prayer, pleading his case at God's court for recognition. So what we read here in the account of Luke is that he was praying at the ninth hour. And it is for, for us today, the ninth hour is equivalent to three o'clock in the afternoon. His reaction of terror when the angel appeared to him was common. What is it, Lord? He was so surprised. Gideon, David, Zechariah, Mary, the shepherds, and the women who followed Jesus were all afraid when they saw an angel. And even Daniel fell to the ground in fear because he saw an angel in a vision. Cornelius didn't know much about Jesus yet. He called the angel Lord. He said, what is it, Lord? And the word means that it was a common address to a human in authority that is someone who has sovereignty over another. So it's some, something, a common address to somebody in, out of respect, Lord or Sir. Although the word here in English is capitalized Lord, which is open reserve for Jesus, the text is clear that this is an angel and not Jesus. We can see that in verse 5. But what we observe this with significance is that, uh, that his prayer and his arms were honored by God. God had honored his prayers. His arms giving and prayer were recognized as a memorial, as the angel said. Why? Because he honored God. In Proverbs 13, 14, the writer says there, whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honors him. Now, definitely, this act of Cornelius was commendable before God, that the angel said it was a memorial. But it was not a good work that can earn him salvation. It is very clear in the Bible. Paul said in Titus 3, 5, and 6, let me read. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's very clear here that salvation is not out of our good deeds. Our good deeds before God are just filthy ranks when you talk about salvation. But God is just to see our good deeds as like Cornelius, that it was a commendable, but as I said, it was not commendable enough to earn his salvation. He must believe on Jesus personally as Savior and Lord. Neither Cornelius' acts nor his persistence save him. But the angel painted a nice picture of what he is known for in heaven. Well, Cornelius is a type of a person who is very good. And we love people like him. His moral, although he was in authority, but he was a devout person. He, he was prayerful, which is a trait seldom we can find in people today who are or who have authority. But Cornelius is one of a kind because his appearance in the book of Acts marked 
the beginning of the salvation to the Gentiles. He is the first person or maybe the second person of, because of the Ethiopian eunuch, which we have read uh, last, last few weeks ago when we learned in Acts chapter 8 that open the floodgates of salvation towards the Gentiles. Cornelius is the first recorded or maybe the second person, as I said, aside from the Ethiopian eunuch who had believed the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why his appearance in the book of Acts is very important. Well, thank God, because it was the act of God, it was his initiative that he appeared before Cornelius in a vision. Yes, Cornelius was seeking. Cornelius must have that uh, promptings from his heart, seeking to know who God is. But it was the working of God. It was his, this vision that made him re realize his need of Jesus. And eventually, he believed on Jesus. And I hope that you have made the decision also to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. It's not because of your religiosity like Cornelius, but because of what Christ has done at the cross. May God bless us. Lord, thank you so much for your word today. Bless us our heart, Lord. Thank you for the record of the life of Cornelius who marked the beginning of the, the opening of salvation towards the Gentiles in history. And thank you to Father that because your plan was to is to uh, offer the salvation to all mankind, to all people into this in, in this world, regardless of ethnicity, race or status. We thank you, dear Father, that you love the whole world, that you make known the, or you allow the gospel to be propagated throughout the whole world in order for us, that every one of us will have the, the, the knowledge and we'll hear the gospel. And thank you that as we hear the gospel, as we hear the word of God, you open our eyes and our hearts so that we believe in you. But there are so many still whose eyes and hearts are blinded. Open their eyes, Lord, that they'll be able to see the gospel and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.